So my name is Ashley Causey, and I am the National Academic Advisor for Nearpod. I joined the team uh, about five months ago and came from being a classroom teacher, instructional coach, a campus principal, director of curriculum and instruction, and was the executive director of secondary schools in the school district in Texas before I joined the Nearpod team. So I'm excited to be here with you. And today with me, I have Zachary Dybel, and I'm going to give him a second to introduce himself. Hi, folks. I'm Zach Dybel. I'm the uh, curriculum manager for the social studies team at Nearpod. Um, I've been working with Renaissance, uh, another our parent company, and Nearpod now uh, for about two years. And um, I taught high school social studies for many years and, and work on my uh, PhD right now in history, um, sort of blending the world of history, social studies, and education. Um, and I'm excited to walk you guys through some of our product today. All right. So just a little bit about our roadmap for today. We're going to start off just really talking about why are we talking about social studies? Why do we have this social studies program and what prompted us to build this? Uh, we'll be talking about what our Nearpod social studies program is. We'll take a few minutes to dig into the platform so you can see what that uh, program really looks like. And then Zach is going to share with you guys really what makes our Nearpod content high quality. So just a couple of housekeeping things as we're getting started. If you have questions, feel free to ask as many questions as you have. Um, put those in the, the Q&A comments and things like that. You can keep in the chat. And then also just as a reminder, some of you may not be aware, <clears throat> excuse me, but in the top uh, right hand corner of your your screen, you should be able to see a notes tab. If you click on that, then all of the resources that are shared, you'll have access to when we finish up today. So just make sure that you are um, using that as a resource as well. Okay. All right, so let's dive in a little bit. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Nearpod and maybe some of you guys who uh, don't have as much familiarity with our program um, with Nearpod, Teachers now have instruction, engagement, and their students all connected. And teachers are able to provide those engaging learning experiences that will impact student achievement. So with Nearpod, teachers can ensure that there are opportunities for active learning for each and every student in their classroom. Teachers will be able to have the data and gain insight into what their students are understanding to be able to use that in order to support that teacher-led differentiation. And with the use of Nearpod Social Studies, you can rely on quality standards aligned content built by our in-house team of experts. And so we're gonna dig specifically into social studies, but these are the guarantees that you will have with Nearpod in general. As we <clears throat> begin our time, so really before we jump into the social studies content, I want you to take a second and think about your teachers that are currently providing social studies instruction, or if you're providing social studies instruction, what are some of the challenges that you face when it comes to social studies specifically? Put some of these in this collaborate board, and if you see one that you agree with, you can use the heart icon to like it. Many of the challenges that you guys are highlighting right now in this collaborate board are, are some of those that we've seen and, and one of the big reasons, some of the big reasons why we've developed this Nearpod Social Studies program uh, in general. And so I want you to think about today as we dig in, just really thinking about how having access to high quality resources could really impact and change the way that your teachers provide that instruction. So thank you guys for participating in that. Um, we're going to look just a little bit at some of the recent studies that highlight some of the challenges that you just shared in this Collaborate board. So so across the board, K-12, our social studies teachers have less access to professional development, coaching, and other resources that support social studies instruction when compared to the peer, their peers that are teaching other content areas. 
We also know that in looking at district adopted curriculum, you can see here that roughly 30% of our elementary and 20% of our secondary principals say that their school or district haven't adopted any social studies curriculum, and that's the highest out of all of our content areas. And then when we talk to teachers themselves, about how they access resources, overwhelmingly the majority of our social studies teachers reported that they cobble. So they basically go out and find all of their own resources from a variety of places and put them together, or they're creating their own resources from scratch, which we know takes a lot of time. And in that Collaborate Board, many of you talked about lack of resources and time. And only 25% of our social studies teachers reported using a required textbook or that locally created material. So all of this really highlights the challenge that our teachers are, are facing and just simply having access to high quality resources to support that social studies instruction. When we think about the amount of time that our teachers are taking, we know that our elementary teachers specifically are spending more time planning than they are for teaching when it relates specifically to social studies. And this could be attributed to the fact that they're having to spend so much time just simply finding resources and gathering information. So what we hope to show you today is how Nearpod Social Studies can help teachers have access to those resources at their fingertips to save time and to promote that high quality instruction. And I noticed in the Collaborate Board, a couple of you said, you know, one of the challenges that you face is finding not only the resources, but finding those really engaging resources and activities. And so looking at the, the data here, um, priorities for our social studies teacher, overwhelmingly the top priority is aligned to engagement of students closely followed by alignment to those academic standards, and then also that inquiry-based instruction, all of which Nearpod Social Studies supports. So today we're gonna take that time to dig in and look at Nearpod Social Studies and how it can support your teachers or you with finding high quality resources at your fingertips to save time and in instruction and planning for instruction. Before we dive into the actual program, I want you to take just a couple of seconds and I want you to think about what would it, what would a dedicated or how would a dedicated supplemental resource help you or your teachers at your school or your district? Take a minute and put something in the Collaborate board. see a lot of saves time, I see a lot of supporting engagement, having those resources without having to go and find them, um, being able to build background knowledge and help your students, um, less wasted time spinning wheels, trying to plan, trying to figure out where do I go to find um, these high quality resources. So our goal today is to show you really how Nearpod Social Studies can help you with that specifically. So with Nearpod Social Studies, it combines all of the things that you have grown to love about Nearpod in general. So we have the interactive lessons, videos, and activities that have all been created and vetted by our in-house experts like Zach, who's with us today. Uh, Nearpod so Social Studies will truly help make every lesson memorable for your students. We know that our teachers, like you guys shared just now, that you prioritize student engagement standards alignment, and inquiry when you're looking for these resources to support your social studies instruction. And that's exactly what we've built with our Nearpod Social Studies program. Teachers won't need to go to a bunch of different websites to find what they need. All of our content is built utilizing the power of the Nearpod platform to engage your students and get them actively learning throughout the instruction. So our content covers a range of social studies topics beyond just history, because we know that teachers have asked for and said they need more for geography, civics, skill building, and those things moving beyond just the history realm. And our guided inquiry approach to every single lesson gives teachers that ready to teach 
lesson that incorporates the proven teaching strategies that Zach's going to talk to you guys about in just a little bit. And it promotes the way that we want our students learning social studies through that exploration, discussion, investigation, and really making their own conclusions. So with Nearpod Social Studies, you and your teachers will receive interactive lessons, videos, activities, formative assessments, and the data to know how your students are doing, the ability to annotate on those primary sources, take VR field trips to get that firsthand account of those historical sites, and so much more. So now what we will do is I am going to jump over into the program, and I'm going to take just a second to show you a little bit about the organization of the program and uh, very lightly talk about the content uh, before Zach talks to you deeply about how our content is developed. So when you come over into Nearpod and you go into our Nearpod Social Studies program, you will see that we have three different grade bands available for teachers to select from. Teachers can search through this way or they can come up at the top and they can search for the U.S. Constitution and then they will get all of the resources that are available related to the, the Constitution. Teachers can then filter it out by grade level. They can look at their partners. So we partner with iCivics and have a, a large number of resources from there. So if I only wanna see those activities from iCivics, I'm able to filter that way as well. So there's a number of ways for teachers to ac access those standards. You can filter by standards based on your state. Um, and be able to find, easily find the resources that you need to provide that high quality instruction. I'm gonna jump over and just go through our th three, through three through five grade band and hop into geography. And you'll see here in geography, we have a number of topics that are available for teachers to choose from. I'm gonna go over here into the state capitals. And when I go here, you'll see that we have seven lessons, five activities and two video lessons. These ones that have the badges beside them are only available if you have the vocabulary, our EL program or our SEL program. But it's this is what we call a topic bundle. And what this does is it's taken all of the resources that we have related to this one topic and put it in one place for teachers to access. And so you'll see here, this is our featured lesson related to state capitals. On the right-hand side, you'll see this is aligned to the 5E lesson. And then you'll see the instructional strategies that are listed out on the side. So opportunity for building connections for students, looking at key information. There's an opportunity for collaboration. So um, an opportunity for students to share, just like you guys have been doing and interact with each other, whether they're face-to-face -face in the classroom or engaging with others outside of the classroom. Um, real world connection and much, much more. So Zach's gonna go a little bit more into how our content is developed and what, what is comprised in our lessons. But you'll see here too, that this lesson, this featured lesson takes about 60 minutes, but right below this, there's a number of other lessons ranging from 55 to 25 minutes that you could use for tier one, tier two, or even tier three instruction if your students need that additional learning. There are activities that are aligned to this. There's a time to climb that is already built, uh, matching pairs, some drag and drops, and then some additional videos that you would be able to use in the classroom. And again, this is just all of the resources in one place for your teachers to access. So now what I am gonna do is that we are going to allow you the next few minutes to explore some of our lessons on your own. So there are gonna be two different screens of lessons that you should be able to click on and be able to access that. We're gonna give you about two minutes to explore these on your own. As you're exploring, I want you to be thinking about how does the pedagogy match how you want your teachers to facilitate their instruction? Are there places for student discussion? Are there primary sources used throughout these lessons? And where do you see evidence of that? So just be thinking of that as you're exploring.
So there are two different slides. The first slide is going to give you an uh, the ability to look through some of our lessons. And it's now student paced. So we've gone to where you can now control from one slide to the next slide. And on the second slide, there are some examples of our activities. So make sure you check out one of our lessons and maybe one of our activities right now. All right, I noticed that Doris in the chat, you said your school has vocabulary, so how does this connect? And I know um, Alec put in the chat, but just so you know that there are going to be some additional vocabulary videos that if you have access to vocabulary, then you would also have access to these additional videos. If your school also has the EL program or our SEL program, you would also have access to um, some of these additional resources. So um, through 21st century EL or our vocabulary programs, okay? So now that you have had some time to explore our program and some of our lessons and activities, I'm going to pass it on over to Zach, and he is going to talk to you just a little bit about how our social studies content is created. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks, Ashley. And um, we're just going to kind of go through a little bit of the strategy behind Nearpod Social Studies, um, and then I'll end with a walkthrough of a lesson that illustrates a little bit of how we apply our different ways of thinking. Um, so what Nearpod Social Studies offers is a supplemental curricular program that helps teachers create these immersive social studies experiences. We really try to prioritize standards aligned interactive lessons, videos, and activities that are built around, built using the power of Nearpod, but really aligned to offering lessons that would apply directly into the classroom. So the lessons and activities are going to be aligned to standards that prioritize topics, subjects, and outcomes that we see as sort of being a critical mass across the several state standards. Um, it's going to offer these kind of diverse opportunities for interdisciplinary engagement that prioritize literacy, um, cross-cultural engagement, uh, a bunch of different kind of source spaces that allow for the application in those classrooms that are beyond just a traditional social studies curriculum. But we also look for uh, instructional design that also mirrors those kind of interdisciplinary strategies and then also allows students to make these real world connections between course content and their own experiences. And so that all, you know, is kind of the theory of what we're laying out. But how we go about doing that is really working toward three main goals in our content uh, production. The first is that we want to have rigorous quality content. We have expert social studies teachers and people with backgrounds in history and different social studies topics looking at the content that we put into our resources to make sure that we are keeping up with, with current scholarship, making, up, making sure that our approach to complex topics reflects the kind of highest standard of um, accuracy and, and alignment to the the rigor that you would want to see in your classroom. Um, we get diverse sources and we try to integrate them in ways that support a variety of different learning outcomes. And we also make sure that we are prioritizing sources from many different perspectives. Um, so our first goal really around the rigorous content is meant to make sure that you, you can trust the quality of what will be included in a lesson or an activity. The second major goal that we have is to always have our resources be engagement-based and driven by an inquiry-oriented design. And this is really cutting edge of 
social studies education is trying to take these wonderful digital resources that we have out there in the in the education world but how do we make them really support high quality instruction and using these inquiry by design models using guided inquiry approaches to instruction that is really at the core of what our offering is aiming to do with the social studies content that we're presenting it also kind of helps students think about achieving the objectives that they're setting out to do in their in their classrooms by drawing their own conclusions using the resources and the strategies and the opportunities that our product offers them. Our final goal that is obviously these are all interrelated, but uh, is to really make be thinking about how our product supports a comprehensive curriculum. We want to make sure that we cover a lot of different topics that all support kind of a cohesive instruction of your subject. So whether it's history, US history or world history or government, you know, you're looking at it at our product as being something that can be laid over your own curriculum. We we think that that would offer really teachers an opportunity to see that there's a rhyme and a reason to why things progress as they do, but it also allows teachers the flexibility of being able to take our curriculum and move, shuffle it around to fit the needs of their classroom as well. So while we're offering this kind of cohesive curriculum and comprehensive, we also recognize that it's supplementary and meant to really complement what you are doing in your individual classrooms. The the kind of journey how we got there is really thinking about what is it that teachers absolutely need in the social studies classroom and the collaborate board that we started the webinar with was really confirming a lot of what we found in our research right we're looking for diverse resources we're looking for access to primary sources we're looking for engaging opportunities for instruction the problem with that is it all sounds great, but as I know from being a high school teacher, uh, you don't have time to necessarily find all of those sources for the perfect lesson plan. And so one of our driving kind of goals has been, how do we leverage all those great resources out there in our product in a way that teachers can use directly in their classrooms and ways that support the needs that teachers actually have? A couple of weeks ago, the National Council for Social Studies actually published its updated definition of social studies. I'm, I'm sure those of you in the in that network uh, were aware and, and saw this as well. But I couldn't. I, I pulled it for this for this demonstration just to show that I, I couldn't help but notice how in sync this definition was with a lot of the things that we've been really driving at over the past few months in building Nearpod Social Studies. We really focus on that inquiry based approach. We want students to be collecting information and drawing conclusions, but we also want to couple that with really scaffolded and supportive instructional resources that don't necessarily neglect the important historical learning outcomes or social studies learning outcomes that every teacher is prioritizing in their, in their classroom. So we really follow a pretty basic um, structure in terms of how we develop the, the content, but it is one that we that is really important to us. So we start with that phase of just strategizing what is the content that we are trying to build? Where does it fit? What is the purpose that this resource would serve to an individual teacher? And we really want to make sure we're rooted in what the strategy behind what we're building is meant to accomplish. Then we make that next jump into development. So we need to, before we even start writing a lesson, we have a clear understanding of the types of standards that this lesson is going to uh, accomplish, how the objective is framed around that standard. What is the essential question that students are being asked to consider throughout the lesson? And then why would a teacher put this into their classroom curriculum? Like why, why would we ask a teacher to say, hey, this could be useful in promoting understanding of a concept? When we go into the development phase, that's where we think about those questions at each stage. Are we moving toward the objective? Are we achieving mastery of the standard? Are we creating an instructional design process in the lesson that reflects what teachers really want to be doing in their classroom? And once we have kind of taken that approach to developing the entire resource, that's when we then go back and have our team of social studies content specialists of uh, our editorial group really make sure that what we have designed aligns with that strategy that we set out to accomplish. Again, informed by the research and considerations of what, what teachers need on the ground. So 
most of our Nearpod social studies uh, resources and lessons in particular apply the one of these two guided inquiry models. So we have kind of a, a guided inquiry model that has been developed for some of our products that um, focuses on phases of a lesson or phases of an instructional process that allows students to be aware of the kinds of thinking they're being asked to do as they go through the actual lesson. So our in our guided inquiry model, we start with this connecting and contextualizing where students are building some background information, building some context behind the issue, but they're also drawing connections between what they're about to learn or what they're starting to learn and other concepts or experiences that, that might be relevant. Um, we then ask them to investigate and integrate that information. So using these diverse sources and using these different platforms, asking them to do just that, uh, integrating that knowledge into some larger understanding. And then, of course, demonstrating what they've learned and, and how they would approach the same sort of process if they were confronted with it again. So there's just as much kind of mindfulness around how students are learning as there is what they're learning. Um, and then our 5e model, as I'm sure you're familiar with this kind of approach, but we integrate that as well into our lessons. So this also allows where a similar, you can see the parallel structures here behind between each model. So the 5e is a little bit different. We're kind of more focused on exploring information and engaging with the content, maybe having that hook be present in the beginning of the lesson. Then they're being asked to explain different aspects of the content uh, through these kind of engagements with different sources and elaborating on their thinking and reasoning as to drawing their own conclusions. And then, of course, evaluating whether or not students have sort of achieved that goal, but also asking students to evaluate themselves in a way the content uh, that they've, that they've um, explored. And so, again, the point here is that our models are meant to support different processes of student thinking and reasoning as much as they are meant to support offering that rigorous and um, multifaceted content that that Nearpod social or that social studies curriculum in general uh, really needs to leverage. So all of that is to sit, it sounds great in theory, um, but I figured it would probably be best to see it at, at work in a Nearpod uh, social studies resource. So what I've I've isolated this lesson and we're not going to go through the whole lesson, um, but we'll see some parts of it that really highlight how you can see all those pieces I just kind of spelled out coming together in the way the lesson operates. So uh, the Northwest Ordinances, for those uh, on the call who may not be super familiar, um, right? this is uh, a series of laws passed in the uh, late 18th century uh, that essentially allowed for, as you can see at the top here, it's they're analyzing the context and impact of the Northwest Ordinances that allowed for this early settlement and westward expansion of the United States and generations to come. And so this lesson is pretty closely aligned to a very specific outcome. Um, and so it allows you, uh, our Nearpod Social Studies product to move toward that outcome, but thinking about how, what are the kinds of different ways we can look at this issue and not just kind of definitionally kind of considering what um, what the Northwest ordinances were. So every, near, every Nearpod Social Studies lesson will give you a brief overview of what you're going to do in the lesson. And this is mostly for the teacher uh, to review before they engage in the lesson. And it just gives them a good snapshot of what's to come. There might be some information here about in, uh, resources or what's used or just some disclaimers. And we also encourage you know, teachers, this is a time to familiarize yourself with the lesson, make sure that what the, the strategies, the approach to the content and all of that is in line with what you as a teacher would, would want to see. Every lesson has a, a sort of fundamental in essential question. So in this case, we're asking how did the Northwest ordinances impact the settlement of the United States after independence? And this would probably be falling in a, in a US history curriculum. This is for six, six through eight uh, grade level where students may have already learned about the Revolutionary War and they're starting to think about the constitution and the formation of early American government. And the Northwest Ordinances is kind of fits in neatly in between those two. It's always like the one thing you teach that the Articles of Confederation accomplish, right? And um, so the goal here is to say, thinking about connecting what they were previously learning and drawing them into the lesson. So they would have just had a lot of conversations about independence. And now they're going to think about how did this specific law uh, really have an impact on how the United States was settled after that point? And then, of course, the objective is going to be very closely aligned to that question, essentially communicating to students that 
you will be able to answer that question by the end of the class, uh, but also have a the objective having a, a goal to achieve that significance issue, right? Explain the significance of this uh, this particular topic. So again, we lay out the, the instructional plan here. This lesson is following our 5E model and the summary here aligns pretty closely to the summary at the beginning of the lesson as well. But as students move through, they'll know, okay, this is the first phase we're gonna engage and explore. We're gonna engage with the context by studying the Articles of Confederation as sort of background on the Northwest ordinances. And then we're gonna explore why the United States faced a bunch of issues after independence. As a way of building that context, we're gonna offer just some basic background information about the Articles of Confederation and providing some students with a, a baseline to, to use as they explore um, the more interactive kind of resources. So in this case, we're just kind of delivering the context here. We have a, a, a source from a stamp honoring the Articles of Confederation, kind of getting them thinking about what this is, and then having an opportunity to discuss with their partner based on what they read, you know, they, they're going to determine that there were probably a bunch of issues that the new government faces, and they start to talk about that. And that transitions uh, neatly into our next section, which should be a quiz. Let's see if I know. Um, sorry, everybody. So the next section was um, intended to be, there's there's a quiz here, um, but I'm not sure how to access it. Um, you're good, Zach. They can see the quiz. We see the teacher review, so you're good. Oh, okay, great. Um, so the quiz, if you look at the, uh, the activity itself, it's going to ask students to explore a source, a, a excerpts from the Articles of Confederation themselves, and uh, that way they're they're kind of digging into this question of issues they might be facing by analyzing the Articles of Confederation itself in answering those questions. But then they'll transition to the next activity, actually unpacking those issues because one of the major issues is going to be settling the West. And so we use this kind of um, structure around the context to, to establish that uh, for, for students. And then the they're presented with an opportunity to engage in a collaborate board that is gonna have them consider what are some of the issues that uh, the early United States was facing under the Articles of Confederation. If they open up this resource, you'll be able to see um, the a set of sources about different issues that are that plagued the early United States uh, that are derived from different um, resources. So the using the Library of Congress, some primary sources and secondary sources. Basically, what we've done with this act, this collaborate board activity is curate a set of sources that would allow students to explore some of those early issues. So rather than having a PowerPoint that just kind of outlines the major issues and, you know, provides that summary, we're asking students to go in and learn about it themselves. And then they can use, they can share their uh, observations on each of the resources provided in the reference material um, that would allow them to then see uh, you know, explore each of these issues in turn. So having kind of set that context for the lesson, they can then dig into the Northwest ordinances, ordinances themselves. And as you can see here, students have an opportunity to analyze the actual text of the law. So when they open up this um, reference media, you'll see key excerpts from the actual land ordinance of 1785 and an illustration showing some of the boundaries that were uh, that were developed by that. So students will have a chance to, using that information in the primary source, they'll be able to answer what each excerpts, what, what they think the impact of each excerpt was on the settlement of the United States. So again, in this instance, we're not telling them what these uh, impacts were. We're asking them to use the primary source to determine for themselves what was the kind of larger significance on settlement and expansion. The other thing here, and, and I saw from our Collaborate Board uh, sharing that, you know, collecting and curating and excerpt, excerpting uh, a primary source like this is a huge time constraint for teachers, right? You have to sp spend the time reading through these primary sources, finding them, and then figuring out how do I present it to, say, an eighth grade audience in a way that is meaningful and, and usable. Well, in this case, now you have three short or four short excerpts that allow students to 
really just isolate each aspect of the source and consider what it means um, going forward for the, the activity. The next, the next activity does a very similar thing. In this case, it's taking the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 and asking them again to engage in these different excerpts and think about what their significance was. So we have two kind of similar parallel back-to-back -back activities, both providing a primary source, historical context, and kind of all of the out-of-the-box things you would need as a teacher to facilitate this activity. Students then have the opportunity to draw those conclusions about the Northwest Ordinance on their own using the actual primary source. So for those of you who know, you know, throughout the course, you're really prioritizing making sure that students analyze primary sources and get practice reading those kinds of historically grounded uh, resources. This kind of activity is pre-made to kind of allow you to leverage that skill in your classroom. And then building on all of that, if you look at our the, the kind of culminating activity of this little instructional se sequence, you'll see that now they're asking, being asked to do some critical thinking about the analysis they did. They just analyzed two different laws about the settlement of the West and all these different features and factors. They thought about how the early United States faced so many critical issues in during the era of the Articles of Confederation. And now they have an opportunity to compare using the drag and drop feature uh, and drag each of the kind of prescribed differences into the Venn diagram. I see someone also working on one where you can you can add your own text to a drag and drop. So this could be an instance too where if students see something or you know you can extend further, they could add a, a similarity or difference um, using the draw tool or the text tool as well. So there's a lot of functionality within these activities and this kind of, you, you can see within the technical side how you can engage students in the learning, but it also shows how the design behind this activity is meant to both scaffold students into the content and then also give them multiple opportunities to apply their thinking and reasoning when it comes to primary source analysis, critical thinking about cause and effect. And then of course, as the, as the objective said, what's the significance here, right? Why does this matter? Um, so that is kind of a breakdown of how we think about the instructional approach to our Nearpod Social Studies product and looking at the way we progress from one kind of concept to another while also moving instructionally with a purpose down that kind of pathway of the lesson. Um, and that is a, the, the other feature with all of these kind of interactive activities is that within a Nearpod lesson, you could theoretically isolate some of these and use them exclusively as standalone activities. You could also move them around if you felt like, let's compare and contrast first and then do the primary source analysis. There's a lot of flexibility, I think, in what we're trying to build because one of the big priorities we have, and again, all of us on the team are former social studies teachers who know the, the trials and tribulations of digging up sources and finding ways to apply them in the classroom and things like that. We really want Nearpod Social Studies to operate from a position of trusting teachers. You know what works in your classroom. What we're offering you is an, is a, is an opportunity to take a resource that has, been, that has had people find the kind of critical things that you might need and build an activity around it that students can dive right in and, and work around. So this is just an example of the kind of approach we take, but there are multiple different um, Kind of applications that we have across all of our subjects. And it's not just, as Ashley was saying, you know, we're not just kind of operating a history curriculum, but these same, you can probably imagine how a lot of these functionalities and these approaches could be applied uh, in, a, in a government or economics or any of those kinds of um, other social studies subjects classes. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the end. We, you know, the lesson itself continues to go through and there's an evaluate section, all of that. But I just wanted to kind of put the proof on the on the screen of how our approach to instructional design plays out in the actual activity itself. All right, thanks Zach for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. I know um, I saw a couple of comments in the chat about, you know, some of these feel like they're really lengthy and you may not have that much time in your classrooms to be able to um, cover all of the lesson and activities and things. And so there have been some updates to our lesson builder 
this past year. And so it's going to be very intuitive if you use Google Slides or PowerPoint or anything like that to be able to, to uh, curate and edit your presentations, just like Zach was talking about, to take those components that you want. You can add to them, take away, and do all of those types of things for your specific. I know some people are in block uh, scheduling. Some people have 50 minutes or 45 minutes and those types of things. So um, to be able to create it for just your exact um needs. And so the other exciting update, if you aren't aware, is that on some of our activities now, you're able to provide that live teacher feedback. And so as students are working, you're able to provide them, you know, there's stickers that say good job. If they're getting it right, you can add, ask a question. And so students will get that immediate feedback uh, from you as the teacher. So it's just another exciting update with all of our, our Nearpod activities. So wanted to share that with you. So um, we have talked, we kind of started our time together talking about what are some of the challenges that you or your teachers are facing as it relates to social studies instruction. Um, and today we've showed you really how there are a vast number of resources available through Nearpod Social Studies for your teachers to be able to take use as is or edit based on their individual needs. And so as we kind of come to our the end of our time together today, we want you to think about how would you as a social studies teacher or your staff, if you are a campus or a district leader, feel if they had a resource like Nearpod Social Studies available to them. So take just a few minutes and put that in our Collaborate board. See about having the ability to do it live synchronously together, but then also doing that student paced version so that students can um, work on that independently or when they're in different locations and things. Um, having these options, helping with progress monitoring for sure. Um, and really being able to, like we started looking at some of the challenges as far as time, finding resources and all of that, that all right here is at teacher's fingertips. And so um, we are excited to share this with you today and would love to tell you more about our, our social studies program and product and